It's that time of year once again. I'm gonna go into my favorite guitars of 2022. Here's my top five. Check it out. How's it going, y'all? My name is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, like the videos, comment below, all that stuff. Check out the podcast. We have been uh, a little lazy on putting out episodes because I've been out for a while. It's been crazy. It's holiday season, but more is coming. So stay tuned for that. Um, like I said, end of 2022, fantastic year for guitars. Uh, really good year for myself personally as well. If you've been watching the channel recently, you know that I was out for a bit because I got married, I went on my honeymoon. Uh, thanks to everybody for sending the nice comments when uh, Chris announced that a while back. You're probably hearing my voice. I lost my voice not too long ago. I've been screaming in delight at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, it's been good. I had an awesome year at work this year as well. Um, I got to play amazing guitars. We got a bunch of new products that have come in. I went to the Martin factory, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start, I got my list of five that is my top for the year. Um, I'm holding this one. Most of the guitars that I'm gonna mention, they have been sold and we are waiting on more. They're coming in all the time, so I didn't bring out each one. I've got a prop here that we'll get to later. But my number five to start off is a new Fender that uh, is made in Japan that is a really cool electric guitar. It's not the Aerodyne, it is the JV Modified. I love that series, I think it was fantastic. You know, it's kind of a reissue of a reissue, if you wanna say that. Um, the one that I am picking for the list that was my favorite was the 60s Custom Telecaster in the beautiful gold finish, double bound, really nice soft V uh, neck profile. Just one of the coolest tellies that we saw all year. We had a few cool double bounds. Um, one of which was from the custom shop, the Tomatillo Telly. But the one that took the cake for me after the massive Japanese release of the Aerodynes this year was the JV Modified from way back in the beginning of the year. Flew under the radar a little bit. However, we've sold out of every single one that's come in. So some people are digging them. But I'm going to link each one of these videos above. As I mentioned these guitars, we're going to show you a little bit of the demo. Um, so my number five, 60s Custom Telecaster. Made in Japan, JV Modified, check it out. So number four, um, there's a lot to choose from, from Taylor Guitars this year. They had another incredible year last year 
We saw a bunch of cool releases. This year was my first year going to the NAM show, and there was a bunch of NAM Limiteds. We saw Redwood Top GT811s, very cool. We saw um, the K62 12 string Alcoa, also cool. Shark Gray T5Z, great guitar. But the one that made the list was from my very first catch event. It was the custom Grand Pacific in the style of a J45. It was urban ash back and sides, not mahogany. It was a full scale, not a short scale. Those are the two things that take it away from a J45, besides it says Taylor on the headstock, but it was beautiful tobacco sunburst, slope shoulder dreadnought. Um, I thought it was appointed beautifully. That was a fantastic guitar. I picked it out. I really liked it. Um, and it was at the catch event, which we've talked about at length on this channel, but there was like 35 to 40 to 50, who knows, custom one-off guitars at this event. Every single one of them was beautiful, but this is the one that caught my eye, the one that we needed for the store. So Taylor catch event, custom Grand Pacific in the style of the classic round shoulder dreadnought. Check it out. <laughs> So number three, um, it was what I called Martin's next big seller, the next big old top product, the Triple O 16 Streetmaster. Um, Triple O body, rosewood back and sides, Torfied, or VTS as Martin calls it, um, heat treated, aged, Adirondack spruce on top. Um, pretty much a, a guitar that is more, I mean, these are features that you really can't get outside of some really, really high-end guitars, and the 16 and 15 series are really the entry into American-made Martin guitars. It was priced incredibly for the construction and the components that made up the guitar. Um, it just, I think, blew everybody away. And, you know, we've talked a lot. We've demonstrated the 15 Streetmaster and the Triple O 15 and the 15 SM. Everybody loves the 15 series. Everybody loves the 18 series. But 16, 17 is kind of the redheaded stepchild, I think, of Martin's American-made guitars. This is the one that I think really stands out amongst the 16 series. Everything else in there is great too, but the Triple O 16 Streetmaster, Adirondack on top, Rosewood back and sides, amazing guitar. We have uh, found it pretty impossible to keep them in stock. I think everybody else is in the same boat. But more are coming in the meantime. Get hyped up, check out a little clip from the demo from before. It's awesome guitar, number three, Triple O 16 Streetmaster from Martin.
So number two, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, I think it was last year I mentioned a whole series as kind of my one of the out of five spot. I believe it was the Ultralux. I could be wrong. But number two is occupied by Fender's new American Vintage 2 series. Everybody has seen all of our videos that we've done up to this point. It's only been out for a few months, but they've been awesome. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Nobody is going to always be happy with something that a brand like Fender does because when it's too modern, they're like, go back to the classics. When it's too vintage, they're like, well, you know what? I can't bend on this. It's a seven and a quarter radius. It's like, what's going on here? All right. But the American Vintage 2 series has been awesome. We went to the event in Austin, got to play everything, got to record straight to vinyl. We got to drink bullet bourbon. It was a great night. They greased me up. So this is not sponsored by Fender. I'm honestly saying it's a cool series. Now, um, you know, we've, we've talked at length about them. It was the American Vintage, then it became American Original. Back to the American Vintage 2, all year specific, new years that they have not done in the past. But I got to pick a couple highlights. So one, 75 Tele Deluxe. My man Larry Slaughter, I hope you're watching the video once again, and I got to throw out John Durkee out there. He got the Tele Thin Line. Two friends of mine from Austin that watch the channel. We became friends over these guitars. I've met a lot of people because of the guitars. Um, they've been things that I think a lot of Fender fans have been waiting for for a long time. So I think they've gone into some really nice, uh, you know, well-loving players' hands. And I think everybody's enjoying them. But the 75 Deluxe, the 72 Thin Line, has been great. I think the 57 Strat is not getting enough love. That's a really cool guitar. And, um, you know, everything, all the Strats, the Tellys. You know I love the Jazzmaster, but I'm trying to think outside the box here. So the uh, American Vintage 2, the one that you're going to hear in the demo, is from that 72 Thin Line because it's super cool. But um, all of those guitars, they've been great. We're still waiting on some of the colors to come in and a couple of the models, but they're fantastic. Number two, AV2. Check it out.
Before we get to number one, I'm going to throw out a few honorable mentions. I'm not going to show any demos. It's whatever. I just want to throw out a couple names of things that I've really enjoyed playing this year. One, Gibson, Adam Jones, Les Paul. I'm a big Tool fan. Had a fun time playing the guitar. I think they did a good job with it. And ours did not fall off the back of a truck. Two, Yamaha's Rev Stars that they've put out this year have been really awesome. I think everybody underestimated them. Thought it was just going to be more Rev Stars, it's whatever. Surprisingly, they've caught on super well. The people that like them, it's like one of those guitars for those who know um, all of them. Element, Standard, Professional, they've all been great. Rev Stars are up there. I really like those. Some of the most fun that we had this year was getting massive runs of Martin prototypes. I'm Hopefully you saw that video, I'll link it above. Um, we got some really cool guitars. The Martin prototypes, some of the coolest. And finally, I got to throw it out there. Everybody knows that Taylor does great things with Koa. The new 700 series have been great, um, 724, 722. And also, this year we got our um, Almo exclusive, all Koa amazing K24s that are not stained, nothing, you know, superfluous other than just beautiful Koa. Those mixed with 724s, been a great year for Koa. But getting to number one. If you didn't guess already, I'm holding it. This was the custom Martin that I got to design for the store. How am I not gonna pick this guitar? Um, I mean, this is uh, basically, if you didn't see that video, again, it's linked above. I got to design my ideal Martin, Adirondack Spruce, Rosewood. It ain't no street master, I'll tell you that. Um, Addy Top, Rosewood, Golden Era Bracing, um, really, I think, tasteful, understated appointments, got the double herringbone, um, got the five, seven, nine, short diamonds and squares, my favorite Martin inlay with the uh, CFM block and the slotted headstock, Waverly's HD zigzag on the back. This one is uh, kind of getting degassed, you know, with that nitro finish. And uh, as you can see, very subtly, uh, tortoise shell binding all over this guitar. Now, I love this guitar. Many of you probably know that we had to wait a year for them to come in. So we finally got them this year, got to show them off. I saved up that whole time, a little bit from every single show that I played, went into a little piggy bank and I bought one for myself. The rest sold out like within, I think three days of when we dropped that video. However, this one was hiding on layaway from one customer who, um, decided to go a different direction. This showed up out of nowhere on the sales floor the other day when I thought all of them were gone. So we do have one more. This one is right here and I've been playing it ever since it came up here. My favorite guitar of the year. I think this is really special. We do, like I said, we went to the Martin factory, Patrick Marr and myself. We designed two new Martins that will be coming late next year. So stick around for those. Really excited. They're totally different than this but I think equally special, equally cool. This one will always have the special place in my heart. So last one, number one, <clears throat> my custom OM based on OM28 kicked up in every way possible that I could think of. Check it out.
So there you go. Um, I do not know what Chris chose as his top five, so I'm gonna have to wait till his video comes out to see if we overlapped. I like to think that we did. He probably forgot this guitar even exists, so it's like, whatever. Hopefully he liked this one. Hopefully we overlapped on some stuff, but we also like very different things. That's why we're both here. Thank you guys for an incredible year and for being with us, for watching all the videos. Um, let us know what you want to see more of in 2023 you know we're just going to be kicking it up a notch so uh once again let us know what your favorite guitars of the year were in the comments below we appreciate you guys very much we will see you uh throughout the rest of this year but also in 2023 with a bunch of new stuff to make a list for next year um, y'all have a great holiday season thank you for watching see you next time